This is a quick explainer of how to read entity relationship diagrams. The first thing to know is an entity relationship diagram consists of entities, attributes, relationships, and then there are different ways of depicting those relationships. That's referred to as cardinality, and those are the lines that will connect these in an entity relationship diagram. So first things first, we have some examples of entities. A really common one for this would be customer. Say you are trying to track a customer and their order. Maybe they sent a coupon in to save some money. So an entity is any noun. It's a what within the relationship that will carry some data to describe it. And as you can see, they are represented with rectangles. Next, we have attributes. So these are like the adjectives that describe those entities. So if your entity is a customer, then you might have their name, their phone number, their birth date. A very common attribute to track would be an ID number, whether that is an order ID number, a customer ID number, etc. It is a great way to make sure that you're keeping track of each unique item. But you might also include some more qualitative or open-ended data, like what language your customer speaks. All of those adjectives are represented with an oval. Next, we have relationships. And these are represented in the simplest ER diagrams with a diamond. So when you think about relationships, those are the verb. We have the entity, which is the noun, the attribute, which is the adjective, and then the relationship, which is the verb. So the relationships are how you draw connections between different entities in your diagram. This would be that the customer confirms their appointment or the customer orders a product. You could have different sets of databases that rely on each other, so it could just be that this database uses data or requests data from here. So there are a few different ways to depict all of these entities, attributes, and relationships. We're going to start first with showing how you can condense some of them. So as you have the customer like I mentioned, you might collect their name, their phone number, what language they speak, their birth date. Instead of having all of these ovals for each of these rectangles, you can condense them like this. So just to give you more examples, the ticket might have an ID number, there might be a phone number for the person who ordered it, a price, the order might have an order ID number, the date, the payment method, and the price. Um, so when you see a bunch of words under a rectangle like this, just know that those are attributes and it's a different way of representing attributes. All right, then last, we have cardinality, which explains some of the relationships and how we depict these things. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in so you can see these super clearly. So as you draw lines within an entity relationship diagram, there are different types of notations that help explain those relationships, but this is one of the most common. And what I want you to do is I want you to just think about how this line looks and what that could be telling you. So as you'll see, zero or many, we have this little O. Many, you have this, it's called a crow's foot, but this three prong thing. And so it kind of looks like a zero and then multiple or many. One or many still has that crow's foot, but now there's this straight line that indicates one. If it's one mandatory, so this means there can only be one, the entire system breaks if there's more than one or no value for this item. Um, so it's never null would be another way they describe it. That's these two lines. So it's saying one and only one or one mandatory. A simple one, so your customer may choose to tell you their birth date. They would have one birth date, but if that value isn't there in your system, it's not the end of the world, which is why you would use just one here instead of one mandatory. Here are the elements that we've talked about and started creating some shortcuts with. So here's what a very high level relationship diagram might look like. 
you have your customer and then you have the payment method, their name and their phone number, all describing that customer. Those are your attributes. And then you have the ticket and the date and the price describing that ticket. The relationship between these two is orders. So in this very simple overview, all you do is draw lines to connect them. Now we're going to condense that down using the notation that we just talked about. So as you can see, it's a lot less complicated. And what we see here is we have the customer, which is our entity. These are the attributes that we collect about that customer. Then we have a ticket, which is another entity. And these are the attributes we collect about our ticket. The relationship between the two is orders. And you'll see that diamond got replaced. And then within here, you can see there's one and only one and one and many. So what this is saying is that a ticket can only be given to one and only one person. You wouldn't want multiple people receiving that ticket. And vice versa, a customer, if they're going to order something, they can't order zero tickets. So they have to order at least one ticket, but they could order five or six tickets if they'd like. So that explains how you get from all of these things to a very high level overview to a super simplified data packed diagram. As you learn more about entity relationship diagrams, you'll see different variations of these things, but as long as you know these items, you have the basic building blocks you need.